Today we have Mr. Anand, who is the Chief Digital Officer, Kane Oil and Gas, Vedanta Limited. Anand, tell us about your organization and its offering. So at Kane Oil and Gas, uh, we are the largest independent uh, private operator in the country. Today we produce about 27% of India's crude oil. Mm -hmm. And our vision is to take it to about 50% uh, of domestic production in about three years time. We have been hearing a lot about your digital transformation journey and uh, disruptive innovation which you have embarked. Tell us more about that. So if I think about it, right, so we started this journey uh, last year formally, but, uh, you know, digital innovation in oil and gas, uh, some people say have been around for many years, right? Um, you know, sensor data, process control, industrial automation has been in this industry and domain for many years. We started a journey in terms of adoption of some of these new digital technologies last year. Mm -hmm. When we started the journey, we thought about uh, certain quick wins and this could be um, analytical models to predict equipment failure or mobile enabling certain processes. Mm -hmm. uh, while we started doing that, we also felt it was important to go on a comprehensive digital strategy and we actually partnered with a consulting company to actually lay out that roadmap. So this was like a three, three and a half months exercise. We went across the assets, looked at opportunities and I'm glad that we have a roadmap in place that we can execute on right now. So this covers your IT uh, landscape as well as OT landscape or just the IT landscape? Good question. So I think a lot of our digital innovation comes at the intersection and integration of IT and OT, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so yes, in terms of the opportunities that we have identified, it covers both the IT and OT landscape. And to give you an example, um, I, from an IT perspective, we realized very soon mm -hmm. that to put some of the digital innovation in place, we needed some of the foundational IT to be properly done. Again, to give you an example, at our facilities, if you want an operator to move out with a mobile device, they would need connectivity uh, you know, back into some of the applications and we felt that industrial Wi-Fi was an important initiative that we needed to embark on. So that's an example of a foundational IT initiative that we needed to bring in place. Right. Uh, in terms of OT initiative, I mean, today we are trying out uh, things like advanced process control on our artificial lift systems, right? Okay. That's predominantly a piece of software an algorithm that sits predominantly in the OT domain. So Anand, this is nice to know that, you know, uh, IT and OT, uh, you know, putting together is what is making sense for your organization. Can you talk or dwell more about a few of the innovation journeys? Yeah, I think uh, there have been a good mix of examples that have um, yielded results and value for us. And let me talk through a few of them. Uh, so in our industry and domain, we have this thing called exception-based surveillance. So very simply put, what it means is when you have process going on normally, uh, the planned process is going on normally, and if there is an anomaly or an issue, let's say an equipment that is likely to fail or a particular temperature going high, those are anomalies that we would like to see ahead and then have our experts act on it. So this whole concept is called as exception-based surveillance. And again, a lot of this information emerges from sensor data that is already there out in the field, right? So what we did uh, last year was around the October timeframe, we sort of uh, have a piece of software that helps us author intelligent rules mm -hmm. on the sensor data that is coming in which will then be able to alert our experts in let's say the petroleum engineering department or in the operations team much ahead of when the issue is going to happen and then they can actually go ahead and take action. We have reduced the number of trips on our equipment, uh, some of our key equipment which is critical uh, to our production process. Um, and I think uh, since then we have actually continually added new sets of scenarios, new sets of use cases onto the same rules engine which is helping us uh, yield results. So this whole exception based surveillance I think has helped us minimize uh, production loss. Another example uh, would be around our workover rigs right. So workover think of it as 
maintenance of equipment right mm -hmm. so well equipment now when we have rigs that are moving around to help in the work over obviously you have limited number of rigs and you want to want the ability to optimally schedule them uh, so that you yield the maximum gain right yeah. so initially this process was a very manual process where teams came together on a weekly basis to decide where they move which rig uh, but then we felt that it was important to maybe look at an optimization opportunity there and again we partnered with a company to first look at a proof of value exercise where we took the last year's data and then saw what an optimization algorithm could bring in terms of benefit we found out that uh, we could have potentially saved two days worth of production if we had used the optimization algorithm and that excited uh, us and then we actually went on to develop the whole scaled out version of the solution which is actually live now again i think directly uh, linked to the business goals of enhancing production or minimizing production loss uh, and that's been our goal i think most of our innovation are very aligned to our business goals around enhancing production or reducing production loss or improving our asset life uh, these are a couple of examples that are directly solving some of those problems your first use case for our viewers can we say is a predictive uh, analysis use case and the second one could be possibly uh, a homegrown robotics process automation uh, yes they are close i think the first one uh, does not involve any machine learning today uh, mm -hmm. but think of it as like i said an intelligent rule uh, engine rule based. so it is uh, intelligent in that sense uh, but it's not a machine learning algorithm because it is not learning on past data in fact as a step 2 now we are th thinking about how we could look at applying predictive analytics on some of our subsurface and surface uh, equipments the second one is more of a combination of automation process. of processes as well as applying an optimization algorithm essentially you are giving the algorithm an objective function mm -hmm. of maximizing production but within the constraints of saying that let's say you cannot move the rig to a particular location or a material inventory for a particular repair is not available the moment you give the algorithm a set of constraints and an objective function it basically helps you maximize or minimize or whatever your objective function is in this case it was to maximize production uh, given all constraints that we have in the field so anand you being the driving force behind innovation what approach do you think is the right approach for your organization one of the things that i keep telling people is when it comes to digital innovation a lot of people think that it is about technology right artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain while i do agree a little bit to that in terms of saying that we need to show people possibilities that these technologies can bring i am a big believer that digital is meant to solve business problems right Absolutely. so we tend to start with business problems rather than you know start with the technology and then go find a solution or a problem to solve so really if you ask me from a approach perspective the approach that we have taken is we said let's partner with the business let's sort of push them to the front and then showcase the possibilities to them but ask them for where the opportunities are or what problems we could solve very early on in our digital journey we formed what is called a kane digital council mm -hmm. uh, represented by the best minds in the business from our strategic business units and technical functions uh, so really a lot of innovation whether is the rig schedule optimization that i talked about or the exception based surveillance or many of the others that we have done have been largely you know managed or led by the business while we partner with them to enable them on the technological aspects from an approach perspective you know keep the business at the front and then you know be the partner to them on the digital journey uh, the other approach that we have taken is um, uh, you know purely from a ecosystem perspective right so we always felt that while we went on to do a strategy exercise along with a partner we felt that from a execution perspective it was important to have the right set of ecosystem right it could be consulting companies it could be software oems 
it could be product organizations that are out there startups are a big uh, you know contributor into our ecosystem uh, and of course in our case in the ot world there are a bunch of vendors uh, that are very relevant right so i think we've taken a real ecosystem approach to execution on digital initiative that has uh, served as well so you mentioned about startup uh, with india's now initiative towards a startup ecosystem uh, around uh, 1000 advanced tech startups have emerged uh, how do you see that you know engaging them in your organization yeah so i think i i've been a big fan of uh, startups I, all along and i i do believe that a lot of niche innovation emerges uh, you know from these startups of course we've started working with some of the startups in the country and some outside the country as well but earlier this year in uh, around mid july we did a global oil and gas conference where we brought together operators and the digital ecosystem and we took the opportunity in that forum to sign a memorandum of understanding with five different startups mm -hmm. um, i think that was also to show our commitment uh, to ensure that you know we are able to promote uh, the startup ecosystem and have them contribute into the whole industry and if i think about it all of these different startups have their own niche innovation so one of them uh, helping us in the real time corrosion monitoring uh, space it's very niche again because uh, i don't think there are too many uh, companies in the world that are able to do real time corrosion monitoring so it's a little bit of changing the game uh, in in a specific industry context then another company which is helping us with uh, robotic process automation in our corporate function portfolio mm -hmm. there's a third startup that is uh, that is uh, this got expertise around the natural language processing area so we've got a lot of unstructured data in our business we're saying how could we potentially look at you know partnering with this startup and uh, having a natural language based application that our geoscience teams and other teams could use right so i think there are a variety of startups that are out there that that we continue to work with and uh, i think we sort of uh, really leveraging them uh, to a large extent today and we'll continue to do so as i uh, see in the near future so that's fueling india's startup growth as well absolutely and uh, i think that's fueling our growth as well uh, alongside so anand uh, what are the major technologies which are uh, creating impact in your uh, domain right i think if you look at um, the key digital technologies uh, some like iot uh, in my mind uh, have always been there in oil and gas yeah. because we've had a lot of sensor data already uh yes we continue to expand um, you know more in the wireless form in in our facilities and our plant uh but if you ask me one of the biggest ones i think are artificial intelligence and machine learning and it applies across our value chain uh to give you some examples uh you know we've used uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning to predict an anomalous situation in our hydraulic fracturing job right mm -hmm. Uh, or we're looking at using uh, machine learning in our reservoir management area. Uh, so a combination of AI, machine learning, and optimization. I think that's really uh, the ones that are creating or uh, the most impactful in our industry. In fact, you have been evangelizing AI and ML quite a lot. I have I've been hearing and reading about it. Yes, of course. I mean, I think uh, I always like things that are at an intersection of. business and technology and analytics machine learning and ai seem to be just that uh, so uh, i've been reading about it and sharing learning about it and i li like that how do you see virtual reality or augmented reality playing a role in your industry so we've seen some offerings from again startups and a few partners uh, right uh, and again to give you an example of what type of offering we've been seeing in our health and safety area for example mm -hmm. if you were to train people on certain safety aspects earlier you had to do it really with all the physical gadgets or take them to the field and do it which now you could use uh, virtual reality or augmented reality to do it 
um, have we really uh, developed one inside the thought has been there in the last uh, year or so but we probably do it uh, in the next few months uh, we haven't really actually deployed one uh, in our organization yet uh, but we've been looking at the health and safety area that's one the subsurface domain is another mm -hmm. one where some of our partners have come and shown us virtual reality augmented reality type offerings uh, which seems interesting but i think uh, i do believe that it is uh, from a maturity standpoint slightly uh, maybe like a year away or a few years away have you evaluated using virtual reality or augmented reality for remote maintenance? Again, we've seen some of those use cases, but uh, we haven't really used it. One of the things that we've been thinking about, and we did some very small pilots last year, is uh, using like a smart uh, wearable, like a smart helmet, for example, mm -hmm. where let's say there is a remote expert uh, who wants to support an engineer on the field mm -hmm. and the engineer on the field is wearing actually the smart helmet uh, maybe you know that could be an interesting use case uh, we've done a small pilot we've not really deployed at scale as yet uh, again I'm not saying that they aren't mature as yet but I think there are opportunities to fake things like you know if it's a very noisy area um, and uh, uh, you know would, would it work as it would in a normal sort of a conference room yeah. or a normal environment, right? So that those are the sort of uh, opportunities that I think uh, we need to solve there. Uh, but definitely uh, something that I think in the next uh, few months, few years, we will adopt. So Anand, uh, how do you see all this digital innovation uh, aligning to your company's vision and mission? Uh, like I mentioned, I think today we produce 27% of uh, India's crude oil and our vision is to take it to 50% of the domestic production. And this is all towards making our country self-reliant, right? Yes. Uh, and from a digital innovation perspective, I think uh, in the last year, year and a half, if I take any initiative, it is either linked to enhancing production or it is linked to improving our assets life or reducing operating cost or reducing time to first oil. Essentially on some of the newly acquired blocks, we want to apply technology to ensure that we are able to produce faster, which will again take us to the 50% uh, vision that we have as a company. So Anand, when we see these new technology emerging in India, uh, any new advanced technology uh, which we would have deployed uh, in the recent past? While we probably experimented with most technology, I think most companies have talked about applying drones or uh, remotely operated vehicles. So uh, we have a fairly unique uh, infrastructure in the form of a pipeline between Rajasthan and Gujarat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this was late to 2017 or early 2018, where we piloted uh, drone surveillance on that pipeline. And building on that success, today we are looking at drone surveillance for safety related aspects in our facility. That's something that we are embarking on. Uh, also, some of the overhead transmission lines, electrical mm -hmm. lines that we have. I think we have had a few issues there where we needed surveillance. And again, we are looking at uh, drone based surveillance there. Uh, so I think uh, drones and drone based technologies are something that we are looking at uh, to see how it can solve problems for us, building on the successes uh, that we have had from that pipeline surveillance that we did. This actually resonates with uh, what Tata Power Delhi Distribution has also done. Mm -hmm. They have used drone surveillance for their uh, distribution lines. Absolutely. Uh, no, I think today uh, most uh, manufacturing, oil and gas and utilities organizations Mm -hmm. are looking at uh, using drones uh, big time, I think both uh, in their facilities or distributed assets like in the case of utilities or the power based organizations as well. Now so much of innovation and digital intervention, uh, how do you see cyber security panning out in your organization? Yeah, that's uh, an important one and uh, a critical thing. I think. Uh, in the last few years, because of the integration of OT into IT, 
everyone wants uh, all the information everywhere right mm -hmm. uh, if you think about it five years back or ten years back these were all isolated from a network standpoint and so on so there were no issues around security right from our perspective i think what the industry is seeing today is a very critical focus on uh, looking at security for our ot systems uh, and the larger vision is to ensure that the critical infrastructure for the country is protected there have been several global issues around uh, you know cyber security that multiple operators and manufacturing organizations have faced um, and i think the effort has been to say how do we bring in uh, security protection for our ot systems and ensure that the right controls are in place and i think we've been investing a lot of time and energy in the last uh, couple of years to ensure that our uh, operational technology environment is protected and of course the enterprise security focus has always been there and we continue to strengthen that i think this piece of information for manufacturing industry is is quite uh, good to consume because Absolutely. ot security uh, very few people would have embarked this journey